Hello and welcome to another video. And today we have a lot of main boards on our board, uh, on our bench. I got sent four different main boards by a viewer, and they all have different stories. Some of them have, uh, as far as I know, have repair attempts. Also got some of the cooler stuff with it, and also I got some of this some candy. So thank you very much for that as well. Um. Let's see, what do we have? We have a Z490E Gaming Strix. We have a B550 Prime. We have an ROG Strix B450i. And let's see what is packaged in here. This looks like LGA1700. And this is a Z390F, so LGA1151. So, let's start with the Z490, I would say. Let's get all of this out of the way. Don't really know yet how I'm going to structure this video. Because this might be a multiple part series. Where we fix one board after another. But let's start with this one now. And now that everything's off the bench. We can also go a little bit further down. So. This one was purposely bought faulty from eBay. But he doesn't know what is wrong with it. Seems like he bought it without knowing that it was faulty or something like that. So who knows? This might have been re had repair attempts, but it is complete. It has the I/O bracket and the all of the coolers, as far as it seems. So on the back side, we can see it's a Z490E, and one of the first things might be visual inspection that should be needed for this board. There are a lot of heat sinks on here. Oh, and I can see the socket has some damage. So this board might actually only have socket damage. But we will have to go deeper into the, uh, go under the microscope to inspect it. So let's turn on the microscope and let's see what we have there then. So now the view under the microscope. And what I can see, that pin right there, that is broken off. Then let's see, this one is still there. This one, bending it back a little bit. This one is gone, I think, as well. Yeah, there is nothing left. So that one is also damaged. So another one that is broken let's see what else do we have we have more damage here this one is just bent but it is there so just bending it a little bit back so these are also bent in this area so all of these should should be bent up a little bit and to the side but they're all there, which is good. So they've just been pushed down somehow. And what I always try to do when aligning sockets, you need to uh, watch it like a grid, that you have an X and a Y direction, and you want to see where the ones next to it end. For example, that the head of this one will end at the same height as this one and on that one. And that's always how I'm going to orientate myself. How far do I have to push it or do I have to bend it? Let's see, this one looks the worst. The um, I can already tell this area to the right here is responsible for memory as far as I know. Uh, so for the memory channels and this damage right here might lead to some memory channels not being detected. So let's see what we can do to this. So just more damage right here. Just more pins that are pushed to the side that need rebending. And that is mostly it. The other ones look fine, but this area will need a lot more work because not only 
what is very hard to see because I'm using a digital microscope. It's very hard to see how high they actually are. So they can be they can be from the direction could be facing the right way, but they also have the uh, y axis where they could be far up or far down. And most of these are very far down, are pushed uh, down a lot, like they have fallen flat on their faces and they need to be turned up again. The biggest problem is that especially if you have to do this a lot, um, you need to be very careful that these don't short together against different ones. But this for now is how I would uh, leave it. Um, I want together with you to go under a board view and I want to look at some of these uh, legs to see what they are responsible for because the socket layout is universal for the same chipsets or for the same types of sockets. So just taking any board view from a Z490 uh, will lead us to see what these pins are responsible for, especially these two that are broken and the rest of this side. So let's go into the board view and see for what these are responsible for. So now we are in the board view for a Z490A prime from ASUS. And let's see, one broken pin that we have is this one, VCCIO. This is an auxiliary pin. So this means there's multiple of these connected so there's not many, but there should be enough here. So this shouldn't be a problem. And the next one missing is this pin right here. This is AF8 and this goes to the memory channel. So the right memory channels, the B1 and B2 will not be working because this pin is missing. So already can tell that we have will have problems with that because this one is completely missing, so there's no bending back. And let's go over this side here, what these all are. This is ground, this is V-core, this is a lot of V-core show, so this isn't a problem. Going further up, this is ground, this is B8, and this is also for the right one. Let's see further, B8 is also for the right one, and B3. So we might have working A1 and A2, but definitely not working B1 and B2. We will be able to test that. So let me get a CPU into there and we will have a look at the data channels for um, for the DDR and we will test if they are still okay or not. So we now have a CPU in there. Let's get the DDR tester in here. And let's see, we will have a lot of missing ones here. So. Let's see, I can see two missing, which will be, let me get it closer. There's one LED missing right there and there's one missing right there. So there's two missing data links for the B channel, for the right one. Let's now see if we get any on the left one on the A channel and on the A channel it seems like everything is there. So we have all the connections at least on A. So th um, we might be able to turn this board on with at least channels A populated but not channel B so we don't have going we're not going to have dual channel RAM. So let's then see if there's anything else wrong with this because because V core, a lot of V core pins uh, were broken or bent. I would now want to see if we have a short on V core. So let's get the multimeter on here. So let's see right now. What also we had was on VCCA, a pin that was missing or bent. So let's check right here. There's an inductor which I think should be VCCA or VCCIO and they seem to be fine. So no shorts on there. Let's now see for V core. I need to find, there are filtering capacitors that might be V core right here. So let's see on V core, I measure 1.2 ohms. I think this is the ground side. Let's see the others. No, this is the ground side. So we have 
This might be bad. One ohm, this is, I don't think that this is the processor on vCore that has one ohm. Let's see, we're going to take the processor out and let's measure again. So one side has zero, really close to zero and the other side has, no, that is the CPU, okay. So vCore isn't, at least it isn't shorted when there's no CPU inserted. But it's a little bit low, in my opinion, when the CPU is in here. But I'm not too sure if 1.3 isn't too low for VCOM. We're going to find out, we're going to be trying it. This is a sacrificial processor anyways. This is a, um, this is just a Pentium G5925 or something like, this is nothing special. And we will also see in the passive power consumption how this board will react. So let's build it up and see if we can get a boot out of this board. So let's now look at the passive power consumption. We have 170 milliamps. That looks very good because of all the LEDs that we have. So let's see if we have reaction to the power button. We have reaction to the power button. Restarting on its own. That looks very good. Let's see. Let's get a post screen onto here. B2. This looks very good. It's running through all the codes. Let's see now. 1.5 amps. Resetting a lot. D6, D7. I do not have a display yet. A2. Let's see uh, with the keyboard. If we have indication, uh, because I feel like this board is on, I just don't have a post screen yet. And yeah, we do have keyboard indication. So if you have a look at this, numlock is active, so the board is definitely on. I just do not have a cap capture. Let me see why the capture isn't working. Let's reset once more. So turning off via the power button also works fine. Trying to turn it on once more, two arms. And let's see if I now can get, can get a picture through the HDMI output of this board. But the board is already on with two arms. So let me, let me get a GPU into here and let me see if I can get post out of that. So let's try it now again. This time I have a GPU in here, bigger cooler, and I put two DIMMs uh, RAM uh, sticks in here in both a, a0 and a1 that is, or a1 and a2. So we're just in one channel. And the board is restarting again, going through all the postcodes. Let's see now if we can now get a picture through our GPU this time. Restarting on its own, okay. And there it is, now we have a post screen. Now the board is on. We have eight gigs of RAM, just the two sticks that are in there. And yeah, this is basically as far as I can go with the board. Um, we could test vCore now, do some stress test because of the pins that were missing there. But sadly, there isn't really much that I can do for this board. Um, there's the possibility of replacing individual pins on a, in a board like this, but that is connected with having a really good preheat jump because this is a very big board. This is a high end board. Um, when you take all of the coolers off, you need very good preheating in order to not melt the socket and get the individual pins out. It definitely is possible, but really isn't easy. I've done it before, I've pulled it off, but it was on on boards that had not such high heat sinking. So not that many layers and it was a lot easier than to pull them out. So this board can definitely be used with the config uh, with a single um, single channel RAM configuration, but sadly not with dual channel. Um, yeah, but I'm going to leave it at that because I currently am not able to uh, replace sockets. So this thing can be used like it is right now, just without the two RAM channels. And 
one of the pins that we had two missing signals. One of the signals we can replenish by just bending one of these pins back uh, like they should be. But the other one we can't because it's broken off. So, so far I'm going to be putting this to the side because I don't know what to do with it yet because I'm not uh, I'm not changing out sockets yet. Um, yeah, this this board definitely is worth sending out for replacing a socket because it's really just a socket. Everything else just turned on fine without any problems. So yeah, I will have to think about what to do with this board. But we were already able to get further than it was before because it seemed like there were shorting pins before and now with just a little bit of uh, banding and elbow grease, we got, got the pins back into position where they now work. So for now, we call this board repaired. Um, I'm not going to do anything further to it because I will just damage it. Um, I will talk to the owner how we are going to proceed with this board. He might be wanting to use it like that or I would advise him to send this out to a shop that could um, replace the socket because I cannot do that. And I was able to diagnose that basically all it needs is a socket replacement. And yeah, that is it for this this video. We're going to, do, be, going to be going over the other boards in the next videos. I'm going to be cutting them up in probably individual videos. And so... Subscribe so you can see the next videos on uh, this job lot from this video. And hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. All of my tools are linked in the video description. This was Mainbot Medic. Thank you very much and goodbye.